heaven. And which erroneous beliefs give conventional Christians the most difficulty in finding the narrow path to God? Well, um, this question was interesting when you, when you first uh, listed it for me because I, I just thought, well, I could list so many of <laughs> beliefs here. that um, <laughs> Because it, uh, beliefs are a very individual experience. Mm -hmm. There are certain beliefs that we imbibe with our whole heart and soul and those particular beliefs, of course, can have a terribly detrimental effect on our soul. Mm. There are beliefs that we hear, yeah. uh, but we don't really go yeah. with. So, for example, all of your life as a Christian, you would have heard of the Trinity. Mm. But you've never really believed that Jesus is God. No. You know, you, you've, yeah. you, don't, you didn't know, but it's not something that you firmly thought, yes, no. he's definitely God. No, no, definitely. It? So you could say under those conditions that the belief entered your mind, mm. but it had, didn't really enter your heart. No, it didn't enter the heart. It went around and around, <laughs> it went around, and, around <laughs> and, it, and you couldn't make sense of it, and you couldn't make sense of it, and so it didn't, never went down, you could basically <laughs> say, right? And this is the case with many beliefs that we mm. hear, no matter what religious profession we are, mm. is that there are some beliefs that enter our heart because we have an openness to believing them, mm. and not necessarily because they're right either, yeah. but we have an openness to believing them. Whereas other beliefs only enter our head mm -hmm. and they don't enter our heart. So, so, for example, in the 1800s, there was a general Christian belief that black people were cursed. Mm. Now, it entered the hearts of the people who engaged slaves. Mm. So, in other words, they felt justified in having black slavery because they, with their heart, engaged the concept that the blacks were cursed mm. from Cain. From yes, Canaan, yes, you know? yes. Now, the Christians who did not agree with that, in other words, the Christians who heard that teaching but it never entered mm. their hearts, could not embrace, embrace slavery. They could see that slavery was wrong. Mm. So those Christians didn't embrace slavery when the other Christians who let this belief enter their heart could embrace slavery. Mm. That's an example of how a belief affects us. Effect, yeah. Now... It is mostly the beliefs that go into our heart that affect our life in the spirit world and in our future. Mm. And so with this question that you've asked, it is mostly the heartfelt beliefs that cause us mm. the most trouble when we arrive in the spirit world. Mm. And they also cause us the most trouble here on earth mm. because it's a very similar position. Now, what are, so the question then becomes, uh, what are the belief systems that are Christian belief systems that enter the heart, that damage the heart so right. much that it makes it very difficult for a person to get out of those belief systems. Okay. And, and this is what I feel they are. The very first and biggest one, the concept of God. Mm. The concept of God in general Christianity is that God is loving, but love includes punishment and violence. Mm because there is an expectation that God will violently destroy the wicked. So there is a justification of this belief by saying the wicked deserve destruction. Now, it, it, no one ever considers, of course, that God might not have made a system where the wicked need to be destroyed. The, fa the fact is that God is very much more clever than that. The way God made the system is the wicked need to be corrected, mm. not destroyed. Mm. So God made a corrective a system for the wicked, not a destructive system for the wicked. This is yes. something that we need to understand. Yes. However, most Christians want there to be a destructive condition for the wicked. So they are very open to the concept that love involves punishment mm. and not only punishment but violence. Mm. And as a result, and, and this is partially because many of them have been punished by their parents mm. while, they're being said, while the parents are saying, I love you. Mm. I'm belting you with a stick because the Bible tells me I should, mm. but I love you. Right? But if you were belting an adult with a stick, it would call, be called assault. It's right. right? So, so this is all part of why people have imbibed into their heart this concept about God this concept that God is a violent, punishing God at times and that that is love. Mm -hmm. That is the destructive belief. Mm -hmm. Now, that, that single destructive belief has a huge effect on many Christians when they pass. Mm -hmm. 
For many reasons. One reason is when they pass over, many Christians are not in the condition they'd hoped to be. And therefore, they usually end up in some place in the first dimension of the spirit world, in what is called the hells. Now, because they've been taught that they can't get out of the hells and God's going to punish them forever, mm. they don't even try to get out. Mm. They don't even understand that they can get out. Mm. And that causes a stagnation of their soul for hundreds of years, sometimes thousands of years. I've seen some Christians who have stagnated souls for over a thousand years as a result of that one teaching affecting them. So this concept that God is an unloving God or a violent punishing God who destroys wicked, the wicked, is a false concept of God that most Christians have imbibed through their reading of the Bible and as a result of believing that the Bible is God's word. And they have forced themselves to believe it. But not only that, they readily accept it because their own parents were often violent mm. while at the same time saying that they were loving. So there's a predisposition to, to, to actually yes. imbibing the belief. Yes. And as a result of that, they then feel that the uh, concept of God is true. Mm. But it is not true. And every time you have a false concept of God, you cannot ever be at one with God. Mm. You cannot ever be in harmony with God's love when you have a false concept yeah. of God. So that is a very damaging thing to do. The second belief that I feel has a huge effect on Christians is there's the beliefs, the false beliefs about myself. Mm. The false beliefs that I am God has a huge effect on most Christians. It has a huge negative effect on many of them because they sort of think of me as some kind of special, unique God man. Yeah. And therefore they do not believe that they were, are capable of the same way of acting that I was capable of in the first century. Mm. They don't believe themselves to be capable of it because they believe themselves to be sinners. Yeah. And yeah. they believe themselves that, that sin is inherent within them mm. and cannot be removed. Now, I stated quite categorically, and it's actually recorded in the Bible, that you could become perfect. But most Christians ignore those verses, thinking that that's impossible, mm. particularly while they're on earth. Mm. And as a result of that, they compare themselves with me. They always come up short yeah. in their own opinion. And then as a result of that, they attack themselves and break themselves and punish themselves, which actually means they never get close to God. Mm. In addition, they believe that I am God. Mm. And that is false too. They're trying to connect to somebody who is not God. I cannot give them divine love. Only, divine love only comes from God. Mm. Mm. They can pray to me till they're blue in the face and nothing will change unless they have a feeling for God's love. Then something will change. And, and so all of these beliefs about me, including the beliefs of my sacrifice, for example, are all beliefs that have caused huge amount of pro problems for Christians after they've passed. This concept that my blood saves them from their sin mm. is directly opposite the concept that I tried to teach that is present in the Bible, that every single person will be responsible for their own sin. Mm. Mm. All right? Now, what yeah. they're basically trying to say is that I will become responsible by their belief in me uh, that erases their sin. And that is not the case at all. So many of them arrive in the spirit world with all the sins they've committed in, the, in their life on earth, not being erased because they need to erase it using a different method than believing in me. Mm. And, and this is a very damaging teaching because it causes a lot of them to arrive in, in the spirit world in a dark condition. And then not only that, they go, well, it didn't, my, Jesus' blood didn't save me. Jesus' blood hasn't erased my sin because I still have it in me. I can feel it. So I might, what, what's the point of believing anything yeah. that, that I believed? Yeah. And they throw everything away. Yeah. And that causes them to get into a very dark condition of just doing whatever they want, not believing anything, not trusting anybody, not trusting God exists, not trusting that God's love is there for them. So they throw away all these beliefs that could help them mm. as well mm. because, because of that one teaching. Yes. So that's a very damaging thing to do too. The belief about the Holy Spirit is the next uh, damaging belief, I feel, that causes Christians a lot of trouble when they pass. This belief causes them to think that when they were conversing with spirits, that they were conversing with the Holy Spirit. 
And many people, Christians, get told to do things by spirits that they assume they're being told to do by God. Mm. And this is very damaging to them because they're, they're actually doing things that other people are telling them what to do. Now, if they could see the person, yeah. so it was like me saying, do, go here today, do that today, go there, visit mm. this person, mm. they'd go, why am I listening to you for? Mm. But because it's a spirit who they believe is the Holy Spirit saying, go here, go there today, do this, do that, they just go and do it willingly. Yeah. They give up their will because of their belief. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's a very, very damaging thing to do for your future. Mm -hmm. God's trying to help you embrace your will and they are giving up their will yeah. and as a result becoming overcloaked by spirits who are yeah. then assisting them Absolutely. to do things. It's very damaging. Another belief that's very damaging is beliefs about the devil. Mm -hmm. These beliefs have been pre-Christian. They've been throughout the ages, the dark and light concept that there is, if there is brightness, there has to be darkness. Mm -hmm. And this is not true. God created a universe where we chose to embrace the darkness uh, because we had free will to make the choice. Mm. We could also choose to embrace the brightness if mm. we wished. And there is no mastermind of darkness. There is no devil, no uh, angel of God who went bad. Mm. None, of the, none, none of that. Now, the belief in the devil causes a lot of fear. And in fact, if you listen to many sermons that Christian ministers give, they are threatening the congregation with the devil and the devil's got into them. And if you listen to this, you're from the devil. And if you listen to that, you're from the devil. And almost if you listen to anything that's outside of the line of what they believe is truth is from the devil. Mm. And, uh, and this is a great way to control and mm. manipulate people, mm. but, a, but a terrible effect on your soul. So many Christians pass over in the spirit world with huge levels of fear yes. about the threat from a devil, yes. particularly the Christians who are sincere, who know they've sinned mm. and who don't feel they've been forgiven for it yet. Mm. Those particular Christians are just waiting for the devil to yeah. come when yeah. they pass. And they're in huge amounts of fear, huge amounts of pain and suffering as a result of not realising there is no devil and that the only devils that have ever been present in their life have been evil spirits who have been trying to influence them to do evil things. So um, the, the teachings about the devil are very, are very damaging. The teachings that once you pass, you can't change. Mm. You're either saved or judged. These are very damaging teachings. Mm. What these teachings do is they teach you that you can't make a different choice at a later time. And this is a very dangerous teaching. I just need to have a cough. It's a very dangerous teaching because it causes people to, lack, to have no hope. Mm. Mm. Many of them pass into the spirit world, have a relative condition of darkness in compared to what they would like to have had. And then as a result of that, feel that they must be in hell. And then they also feel automatically that they can't get out of it, no matter what they do. Mm. And they don't even try mm. as a result. And many of them just sit there waiting to be punished, waiting, mm. like waiting mm. in this place of stagnation because they, they, they've been taught something that causes them to believe that that's what they need to wait for. Mm. Wait for the judgment of God to condi condemn them to hell. Yeah. And uh, it's a very damaging teaching. It has yeah. a big effect on many Christians as a result, mm. as you can imagine. Mm. Mm. There's, uh, like I'm saying, there's so many, mm. there's so there many must teachings. Be, there must be help for them. There must, I suppose they're just not seeing the help. I understand that. But there must be so many people who really feel so much compassion for these poor people. But see, they've been told that they're, spirit, they're demons as well. Oh. You see, uh, this is a trouble. And there's a, there's quote, they even quote verses of the Bible to you when you're a spirit. I've had, yeah. I've, had, I've had spirits quote to me in the spirit world verses in the Bible that say things like this. Yeah. A, man, a person masquerading as an angel of light. Yes. Now, as I pointed out to people in the first century, you can't masquerade yeah, as an angel of light. Yeah, that would be a bit difficult, light. wouldn't it? <laughs> it's, it's impossible. Yeah. But, but there are verses in the Bible that state this. Yeah. You can, you can put on a facade for a short period of time but as a spirit, it's very difficult to do mm. such a thing. Mm. You can also put on a facade of words and masquerade as light mm. with words, but if someone can look at your person and see straight away whether you have brightness or not. Mm. 
But that scripture has been quoted to me so many times. Many people have asked for Jesus to come to them when they feel in a degree of pain. Mm. I've gone to them in the spirit world, right, and sat with them, and they tell me to get away from them and, and swear at me and curse me because I'm masquerading as Jesus mm. is their viewpoint. So what can you do to help yeah. such a person? You can only go away and wait for their belief system to change through some kind of interaction they have through the law of attraction with other things. Mm. So, yeah, there's, there's those kind of problems too that occur in the spirit world once a person passes. So I think when uh, you've got a question coming up about, about the shock, you know, what, mm. what happened, how do you cope with the shock of what mm. happens in the spirit mm. world? Mm. And I think what we can do in that uh, discussion is, is talk about some of the reactions that spirits have when they pass, Christian spirit people have when they pass into the spirit world and how they can address some of these problems. Mm. You see, many Christians don't realise that they pass into the spirit world. Things are not as they expect them to be yeah. generally. Yeah. They, they don't sit at the right hand of God with me on a throne as they have been promised. Mm. Uh, they don't, they're not singing hallelujah, mm. you know, <laughs> in the welcoming stand. They're not, the, all of these things are not happening. In mm. fact, their life seems to continue very similarly as it's continued on okay. earth for the majority of them. And then they start to wonder whether any of their beliefs have been true. Now, there are a lot of Christian beliefs that are true. Mm. You know, God does exist. Mm. There is one God. There is God's love that can be received into the soul. Mm. You know, you do have a soul. Mm. You do have a spirit body. You, do, you, you are able to progress. Mm. You are able to live in paradise in the spirit world. There are locations that are paradisaic in the spirit world that you can live in. But they all are available only with the condition of love that the soul reflects. Mm. Now, all of the disciples and apostles who, and, and um, men and women I'm talking about in the first century, who were with me are in the spirit world. Most of them are still there. You could ask any one of them to come to you and talk to you about the first century and what it was really like. Wow. You could ask any one of them to come to you and talk to you about what my teachings were really mm. in the first century. Mm. They can show pictures of what they saw themselves to the minds of the person who asked the question so that you can see what I taught. They can, they can mm. distribute huge amounts of information. There are places in the, in the spirit world where you can get a book like the Bible and in it is annotated every reason for every verse that was ever written. Yeah. The person who wrote it, the person who actually wrote it, not the person that it claims mm. wrote it, mm. the person who wrote it, the spirit who inspired it, why they did it, where they were coming from, everything. Mm. These, this information is available everywhere in the spirit world, but only available to the people who are willing to find it, right. who want to find it. And that's where I feel there is another problem, and that is... The Bible itself says, don't listen to anything else. Mm. You know, in the book of Galatians, it says, if anybody comes to you, even an angel in heaven yeah. comes to you, revealing something other than what the Bible has already revealed, don't listen to him. Now, many Christian spirits, when they pass in the spirit world, they take that verse literally. So what they do when they go past in the spirit world, they go, okay, I'm not allowed to listen to anything other than what the Bible says. So if somebody comes to me and tells me something about the Bible, I'll listen to them. But anybody who tells me something that's different than what the Bible says, I don't listen to them. So, so you imagine a disciple of Jesus from the first century or an apostle of Jesus in the first century, male or female, comes to the person in response to their question and starts talking about something that is not contained in the Bible. What do yeah, they do? Yeah. They go, I can't listen to you. You're an apostate. You're, you're not, you, mm. you know, you're bright. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Without thinking about, oh, that's I feel good when I'm with you. I feel, I feel like I've yeah. progressed. I feel yeah, I'm going right. somewhere. Yeah, you feel good when I'm with you. And I uh, come to think of it, Jesus did say something about brightness and not holding your life <laughs> under a basket. But, but they forget all of that. Yeah. Because there's this other verse prohibiting mm. the absorption of this knowledge. Mm. And this is the problem. Like the problem with these kind of verses is they lock the person up into stagnation. Mm. They, they, don't, they don't free them. They don't. Mm. Remember I said, and it's recorded in the Bible, the truth will set you free. Yes, yes. It doesn't lock you up yes. into a place. Now, these kind of verses, the verses like in Galatians, where, in Galatians 1 where it talks about how you, you, know, you, can't, you can't 
trust anybody, even a spirit who comes to you or an angel who comes to you who teaches you something other than good news of, than what you've been taught. That kind of mentality locks you up into a, only a certain way of thinking. Now, when one of those angels comes to you, they must be an angel for a reason. Mm. They've got to have a lot of love in their soul. Mm. They must have listened to some truth to get to that particular point. And this kind of a verse is basically condemning them mm. and telling you not to listen to them. And that is very, very damaging and dangerous. Oh, yeah. And, and it causes the poor spirit to go, I'm not listening to you, I'm not listening to you. I feel like I like you a lot, don't you? You're not yeah. person. <laughs> you know, yeah. they're all confused about that and they're confused about the amount of love the person's showing and the person's talking about Jesus and talking about the good news and talking, but, they, but they're also saying about soulmates and they're saying about you know, other teachings that Jesus isn't God and that the Holy Spirit isn't God and, you know, mm. that there's this divine love and I've never heard of the divine love. Like there was mention of it in the Bible but, you know, I might not have read about it. And then the Spirit's saying there's no devil. You don't have to worry about a devil. And, and you're saying, that, no, the Bible has revealed to me all of these things and I can't listen to you. Mm. And unfortunately for many of these Christian spirits, they stay in that state for long periods of time not understanding why they didn't get what was promised. Mm. You know, I promised mansions in the spirit world mm. to my followers. Mm. And the reason why is because if they follow my teachings as I taught them, mm. they will get into beautiful conditions of love and they'll need a mansion in which to live, mm. just reflecting their beautiful condition of love. Mm. I promised them paradise mm. in the spirit world. Mm. I promised them to be with me in the celestial kingdom of the spirit world, in my kingdom. Now, if they're not there and they're not in paradise and they're not in any of these places that I described and they don't have a mansion of their own, this is an indication that something went wrong. Yeah. And it's not something that went wrong with my teaching. Yeah. It's something that went wrong with the distortion of the teachings. Yeah. And the problem with the belief in the Bible is it contains some of my teachings as well as distortions of my teachings. And if you believe the distortions of my teachings, they will prevent you from having the mansion, mm. prevent you from having the paradise, and prevent you from being in my kingdom. Mm. Because it'll be the lack of love that prevents you from being there. Mm. If you understand the teachings as I taught them, then the love will transform your soul and you'll have a mansion and you'll have paradise and you'll have you know, you'll be in the kingdom. You'll be able to speak with the disciples, the apostles from the first century and every one of them since that have yeah. done the same thing. And that's what I would encourage Christian spirits and Christian people on earth after they pass to do. Mm. I would encourage them to focus on getting the information from the people who are bright. Yeah. And, and seeing that if the person's bright, they must know more truth, as I said, in the first century. And if they know more truth then maybe the truth in the Bible isn't the truth. Mm. Maybe I need to change my perspective of what's going on with what I understand from the mm. Bible. And that's what I would recommend a lot of people do. Um, the, probably the last area where I feel that uh, Christians get negatively affected by their teachings is that because there is this internal concept that they are sinners and there's no good in them, mm they don't trust their emotions very much. Mm. They trust their intellect. Now, the problem with trusting your intellect is that false and true beliefs can exist in your intellect at the same time. But false and true beliefs cannot exist in your soul at the same time. Okay. And if you remove a false belief from your soul, the truth can enter it. Now, many Christians who pass in the spirit world are still heavily trying to use their intellects to resolve the condition of truth. So when you go to them and start speaking about the divine love, they say, oh, but what does the Bible tell me? And they go there, the Bible tells me this, the Bible tells me that, and they look at some contrary area, you know, contradictions in the Bible, and they look at those, and they study all of those, and they say, but I don't understand what you're saying. And they're all trying to do it with their mind. Instead of just engaging this concept that God wants to write the law on their heart. Mm. And their heart is emotional. Mm. Their heart is the feeling centre of themselves. That's their soul. And if they allow their soul to open towards God and have a desire for God from their soul, all transformation can take place. That's how simple it is. 
And the problem with focusing on the development of the mind and studying things and studying things and studying things and studying things in order to understand them without actually feeling any mm. of them mm. is that your soul is not transformed. Mm. And many Christians pass in the spirit world with heavily developed intellects in, a very, in quite a good moral condition and, and, and many of them in quite a good ethical condition. But because their heart has not been touched by love, they struggle in the spirit world to come to God. Yeah. Yeah. So these are all different reasons why Christians find, many Christians find it difficult. You'll find that every religion on the planet and every no religion on the planet, every non-religion and no religion on the planet, every single person who's a member of any of those things has a specific set of emotional conditions which determine how easy or hard it will be when they arrive in the spirit world. And, uh, and I'm not saying there are many Christians that have found it easy because they did not imbibe everything from the Bible that they thought, you know, mm. they thought, oh, that doesn't make much sense to yeah. me. I'm, you know, yeah. I can't accept that. And because of that openness to reason, they easily embrace divine truth. Mm. Other Christians who are very militant mm. and violent in their uh, opinions about the Bible and, and being God's word and so forth, they have spent many hundreds and sometimes thousands of years before they've found the truth. Many of those, though, have found the truth faster than a person who has been a new age, yeah. pra practicer of new age, who has been overcloaked by very dark spirits all of their life. Yeah. And they've passed in the spirit world in a dark condition and they spend a lot of their life just in their addictions. So every single belief and teaching on this planet, even teachings of reincarnation and other teachings such as this, have a huge effect negatively, if they're false, on the future progress of the person, whether they're on earth or in the spirit world. Mm. And if we have compassion for everyone, no matter what, where they've come from, whatever background they've come from, and share whatever we can divine, with divine truth with them, that's going to have a very powerful effect on their lives if they are humble and open mm. to listening to such mm. truth. Yep. And uh, the problem with locked-in opinions is that it makes you not very humble or open to listening yeah. to truth. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well, thank you.